Emotional eating is probably one of the biggest behavioral setbacks when you're trying to eat healthy and stick to a diet. Probably the worst part about emotional eating is that it creates a vicious cycle where you eat something unhealthy as an emotional response, then you feel guilty, you lose your confidence in your ability to get a hold of your diet, and then the cycle begins again. But I promise you, it can be fixed. And we're not looking for a band-aid solution here. We're gonna fix the problem at its core. So I personally characterize emotional eating as using food, more specifically junk food, as a response to a negative emotional state. Now the emotional state can also be positive, although that's much more rare. There are many examples of emotional eating, such as stress eating, eating when we're sad, and eating when we're bored. Emotional eating creates a food craving, meaning a desire for a specific food or a specific food group. And this craving is triggered by an emotional state. Now, cravings are distinctly different from hunger in many ways. First of all, they are specific, meaning that you usually crave a specific food or at least a specific food group. Whereas in hunger, pretty much anything sounds good, as long as you don't hate it. Two, they start in the brain, whereas hunger usually starts in the stomach. And three, they appear suddenly, whereas hunger usually develops over time. And there is a biological drive for emotional eating. Feelings like anxiety and stress cause a rise in cortisol, as well as other glucocorticoids. These hormones stimulate appetite and remain in the blood for an extended period of time. Since ancient times, humankind has subconsciously associated eating with relaxation and safety, especially foods that are high in calories, high in sugar, high in fat, and high in salt. Eating as a response to negative feelings is a natural response from your body trying to tell you that everything's all right. If you're eating, it probably means that you're not currently being chased by a tiger. That's what your brain thinks anyway. But what we need to understand is that the biological drive for emotional eating is not the only cause for it. It's just a part of it. The biggest problem with emotional eating is that it becomes a habitual response. A habitual response is simply something that becomes natural to do as a response to a certain stimulus or trigger. In this case, the trigger is the negative feelings of sadness, anger, stress, and the response, well, <laughs> and every time you continue this pattern, it only reinforces it. That's how our brains work. They get conditioned to give specific responses. Getting rid of those negative feelings will usually cause the response to stop, since the trigger has been removed. But this is only a band-aid solution. Unfortunately, none of us can be happy 24-7, which means that we can't just rely on removing the trigger itself. We want to fight the problem at its core. What we want to do is help you find a way to stick to healthy eating habits regardless of your emotional state. That is the goal. And thankfully, I know how to do that because I've been there myself. Now, in order to fix the problem at its core, we're going to want to sever the bond between your emotional state and your eating habits. So how do we do that? Well, there's really no other way than to separate the two situations. What you need to do is apply a rule to yourself. Anytime you feel stressed or angry or sad and you have the urge to eat, you simply wait 10, 15 minutes, or ideally as much time as it takes for you to calm down a bit. And then if you still want to indulge, go right ahead. See, negative emotions are rarely flat. Usually they come in waves and we usually fall into emotional eating when we're at the lowest point of that emotional spectrum. And it's there that it's key to tell ourselves to just wait. But you might be wondering two things now. One, what does it matter if I indulge now or 15 minutes later? At the end of the day, I'm still eating what I was gonna eat. Well, the difference is that we're trying to sever this subconscious bond between your negative emotional state and your eating habit. And by having those two things happen separately, we are working towards that goal. And number two, why tell myself to just wait and not tell myself to just not eat anything altogether? Wouldn't that be ideal? Well, the reason for that is quite simple. It's too strict and it's not realistic. Your brain doesn't appreciate you telling it 
that it can't or shouldn't do something. Now imagine if someone were to throw you inside a room. In this room you had an endless supply of your favorite foods, your favorite movies, your favorite video games, other hobbies that you enjoy like painting, anything that your heart desires. But then they told you, you cannot leave this room until I say so. You probably wouldn't even last 10 minutes without your mind starting to freak out. Even though the time in the room is actually enjoyable. But if instead they told you, just wait 15 minutes and then you can get out at any point you want. You would probably stay there for hours and hours on end. Telling your mind to wait instead of outright forbidding that choice is much less stressful. And at the same time, it gets the job done. The job being to sever the bond between the trigger and the response. And over time, as you get used to this, you can start increasing the time that you're waiting. Eventually, you reach a point where your mind is going to completely disassociate the trigger from the response. And at that point, even if you still do get cravings, they're going to be much easier to deal with. And this is definitely easier said than done. So to make this process easier, I have five extra tips for you to try out. The first tip is hopefully already done because it's understanding the fact that emotional eating is simply a biological response that over time becomes a habit. And understanding this takes away a lot of its power. Always remember that it's a pattern that was learned and it can be unlearned. The second tip is to get rid of the guilt. Look, I get it. You want to eat healthy, you want to lose weight, you want to keep your diet in check. But guilt's really not helping you out here. Again, emotional eating is a habit. It's going to take some time to fix. If you do indulge in emotional eating as you're trying to get past it, don't hate yourself, don't freak out, don't beat yourself up. It happens. You're not going to have a linear path towards success. It's never like that just keep going. Remember to strive for progress and not perfection. The third tip is to get rid of the reward or special mentality when it comes to junk food. Many people see junk food as a reward or prize or some sort of special type of food that is reserved for only specific special occasions. But this mindset only helps develop an unhealthy relationship with food in which you see foods as good or bad, black or white. Now, I made a whole video about why junk food should not be considered a reward. If you're interested, I highly suggest you watch that video. I'm also going to link it in the description. But the bottom line is that you should only consider junk food as something that you prefer to avoid because it just happens to be high in calories, fat, sugar, and salt. It's something that you're going to have on occasion, but it's neither a reward or a prize. Making such a huge fuzz in your head about junk food whether it be good or bad, only serves to make it more desirable. The fourth step is to remove the temptations when possible. Most people have specific trigger foods when it comes to emotional eating, usually foods like ice cream, chocolate, chips, etc. If possible, remove all of these trigger foods from your house or anywhere that you spend a lot of time at. This will make it much more difficult for you to fall into temptation, even if you don't have the discipline to fight the craving. And the fifth step is to build a routine, if you don't already have one. A routine is great in helping you prevent emotional eating because it's something that keeps you in check. If you stick to a routine long enough for it to become a habit, it serves like an extra line of defense against impulse decisions like emotional eating. Emotional eating is gonna feel strange and weird because it's not a part of your traditional normal routine. Making a routine doesn't necessarily mean following a diet plan, although that is an option if you want. It just means building a good foundation of nutrition and lifestyle habits that are based on your own life, your own needs, and your own wants. Remember that severing the bond is the name of the game here. These tips can help you, sure, but they're not gonna do anything by themselves. It's up to you to hold yourself accountable and start working on breaking that bond. Again, we want to separate the trigger, which is the emotional state, from the response, which is eating or overeating, through a non-invasive method, which is telling yourself to wait. And as a final piece of advice, remember this, what we're interested in is progress. If you go from indulging in emotional eating from 10 times out of 10 to 7 times out of 10, 
that is progress and you should be proud of that. Always strive for progress and be proud of yourself if you achieve it, no matter how small. So that was it. I hope you found this video helpful. Try to apply the general advice as well as these five tips to yourself. And I promise that if you keep at it over time, you're going to find that you are going to be much less susceptible to emotional eating. And at some point, your emotional state will no longer affect your eating habits, which is the goal. If you like the video, then please like the video, maybe drop a comment, perhaps even subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you for watching.